weekly live chat show very kindly hosted by omnibus theater who we are really huge fans of and we normally uh, perform there live also on a oh i was going to say on a weekly basis but no we used to perform there live on monthly, monthly. And i think next guests. monday was going to be our july show wasn't it yeah we used to invite like guests to share and improvise but here we are in your living room or your bedroom or your kitchen or who knows where you are right now next to the bath maybe (laughs) but not in it no please (laughs) Uh, right so to those of you who are joining us for the first time today we're going to be talking about well the, the the thing for today is like film or tv and we're going to be talking about richard pryor's roast which we will hear about more later but basically we talk about things every week things yeah. like books things like music things like food we just yeah. chatter and you can have us on in the background you don't yes. need to watch no you do not need to watch i think the purpose of this is to be um gently stimulating but calming mm-hmm. and reassuring and sort of hopeful yeah yes and pass a little time on Wednesday evening. Yeah, we don't really want to add to the noise in the world. Ooh, new lighting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Vera is in her new home studio today. Held together, <laughs> not even with gaff tape, so it's very precarious. It looks good, though. Thank you. Um, um, yeah, should we say that um, the first 10 minutes are kind of uh, checking in and chatter? Uh-huh. And then from about 20 to 8 until 8 o'clock, we talk about The Thing, which is Richard Pryor's roast this week. And then from 8 o'clock, we take your questions. And you can ask questions by logging into YouTube and next to where the video is, there's a chat box and you can type your questions or comments in there. And we might respond to them from 8 till 8.15 or thereabouts. Where the video is, there's a chat. Exactly. And so... um. I wasn't paying attention there because I was doing a technical thing. (laughs) But uh, yeah, ask us anything you want, basically. Um, So mm, I gather that Adrian and and I have um, been having a a slightly tricky week. Yeah, slightly tricky week this week, yes. Just a, well, for me, a low energy, high negative thoughts week. Um, but I've been taking it easy and sleeping a lot. That's good. Mm-hmm. It's I nice have... to be here. Hmm? It's nice to be here. This makes me feel better. Oh, good. Me, yeah. Although I keep worrying that my home studio is going to collapse. <laughs> but um, I am always happy to see you. And I guess this is, I mean, you're one of my best friends. And Seems. I'm so happy to be able to stay connected to you, even mm. though we can't see each other because. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you're across London and... Yeah, we, we live 
fairly far away from each other. I still haven't taken public transport since uh, the middle of March. Wow. I'm nervous about doing that. I, I mean, I have a mask, I can wear it, but uh, yes. I just don't want to travel that far right now. No, fair enough. Um, yeah, yeah, if, do, what, do what is comfortable to, for you. Yeah. Um, should we have a conversation starter? <laughs> yes, but um, I don't know why this is even in the, in the pile. This is, this is number 10, so it's the next one in the pile, but I don't okay. like it. Oh. Um, the question is, what do you like most about the way you look? Do you, do you want to answer that? What, what, um, what? I mean, at least you, it's a positive did, question. Did you write these questions? Yes. Right. I like, I actually like a few things. I like my smile. Good. I think I have a nice smile. I complimented last week, didn't I? Oh, yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> That was a good right one. on the money. Good compliment for me. <laughs> um, and I, I've always sort of like back in the day, I would practice like poses, like so. I when and when anyone was ph photographing me, mm. gosh, I can't speak English today. When anyone was taking a photograph, <laughs> I'd be like, "This is you know, dip your chin, da da da. <laughs> this is the angle I need to be at, and this is the kind of smile." Um, and then when I was a you know as a performer, I get photo photographs taken professional photos and mm -hmm. we're not encouraged to smile properly well you know oh, okay I'm always having to do like a little like lips together smile mm. which is so unnatural for me yeah it's a well it's a weird kind of a smile I mean to yeah. do like it's uh, you know what is that communicating I don't know it seems there's, there's this idea that performers are neutral or mysterious, like the Mona Lisa. Mm. It's like a Mona Lisa. Mm. Yes, okay. And I'm like, I'm not that kind of person. And mm. the longer I am a performer and the longer I'm alive in general, I would just much rather be myself. Yeah, that seems reasonable to me. Yeah, what do also, you like? If you have about? a good smile, Mm -hmm. um, I, don't know, I was just going to say, because I've, I've always liked, um, I think Julia Roberts has an amazing smile, obviously. Um, Cheryl, I don't know what her surname is now. She was Cheryl Tweedy, I think, and then Cheryl Cole, and then Cheryl something else. She was on, um, she was in Girls Aloud. Yes, you know yes. I mean? Is she, she not Cheryl Cole anymore? Name. I don't think so. She might be. I'm not sure. Um, she married Liam, did she marry Liam Payne? Anyway, I'm not really up on her life, but um, she has an amazing <laughs> smile and it looks like the kind of smile that she could just do for hours without putting any effort into it, but it looks really good in photographs. Uh -huh. I always wanted that kind of a smile that you could just do on a red carpet, not that I've ever been on a red carpet, um, and it would look okay. Whereas I think I always look, like if you if you catch me in a in a genuine smile, it just it's just me smiling, but it's not a smile that I can do you know, for cameras, for... You can't sustain, oh, you can't replicate yeah. it and you can't sustain it. Exactly. My eyes go dead and it just looks, it looks bad. So I always wanted one of those smiles that you could do for cameras and I haven't... You have to keep feeling the eyes. You can't just expect them to stay alive without any effort. So what do you, you have to keep like... You have to keep thinking. <laughs> No, this is what, look away audience, look away. If you're not watching the screen, you might fall into under the <laughs> hip, uh, I'm not trying to be hypnotic. <laughs> I know. Um, yeah, because I'm just yeah. moving my eyebrows. That's not really the same thing. No, you just, you just you... think delightful things. Like <laughs> I'm thinking puppies and cheese and going swimming. And you, know, you just have to keep that rolling through your head. I see. It sounds yeah. like, like a kind of Meisner exercise. I don't know. I mean, what am I thinking of? What am I thinking of? What am I thinking? Of? <laughs> but maybe it's also a Philip Gaulier um, exercise of like, if there's an egg on my head, I've got to keep moving. <laughs> it's going to, you know, so it keeps something going. Mm, Your imagination yeah. is going. Yes, um, yeah. that makes sense. Whereas what I, I suppose in those moments, what I would be thinking about is. Am I, are my eyes alive? Are they alive? Are they alive? Are they still alive? Are they alive? No, 
No. <laughs> I would like to say that I have been on a red carpet and I have been shooed yeah. along. <laughs> really? They were like, move along, please. Yeah, even though when I've been part of a show, they're like, move along, we don't know who you are. And I'm like, I was uh, on stage a few minutes ago. <laughs> or I've been invited to a thing, but I wasn't important enough. Oh. Right? That's Actually, I've different. been invited to an awards thing and I didn't know why I wasn't invited. <laughs> And people at my table are like, why are you here? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're a cultural luminary. We've talked about that. Yes, yes. But, you know, was it was it the writing? Was it the performing? <laughs> was it the... <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, and that neatly segues into talking about Richard oh, Pryor. But yes. we have not talked about content warnings. We haven't talked about content warnings. No, so I imagine there'll be stuff to do with race. Yeah. And class. Yeah, maybe. Like socioeconomic, you know, like poverty, mm -hmm. things like that. Could be. Um, His comedy, I think, is also full of um, all kinds of offensive stuff. There's quite a lot of misogyny in there and... Um, there's also racism against Asian people, Chinese mm -hmm. people in particular. Mm -hmm. um, not so much in the roast, but in other stuff I've been watching. Okay, uh, yeah. Them, Again, yeah. so these things might come up. Um, I don't know what we're going to talk about, but no. I, well, I'm interested that you chose to talk about the roast and not like Richard Pryor in general or Richard Pryor this show. So why did you bring up the roast, Adrian? Well, um, I, I talked about the roast to you privately, and then you announced... No, 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 uh-uh. We were going to talk about <laughs> Richard Pryor's roast on this week's show. No, you um, said that we should do it after last week's episode, because it was related to... I can't even uh, remember what we talked about last week. Oh, I may have said... Yeah, I may have said that. Well, because you were talking about Kathy Park Hong's um yes. collection of essays and she was talking about Richard Pryor and I may have said oh, about, talk about Richard Pryor's roast okay mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. that may have happened yes. um and the reason that, that that the reason for that would have been that that was the only thing until then that I'd seen really that Richard Pryor had done I'm I'm not really oh. about Richard Pryor's career or comedy but I have spent all afternoon immersing myself in Richard Pryor and specifically in the Richard Pryor show which I'm now very excited about um, and I did watch some of his stand-up as well. I mean, he's super interesting. Uh, yeah, he's a really interesting guy. So I still like. Yeah, it's still the roast is is also interesting mm -hmm. for other reasons as well. So the reason that I saw the roast originally yes. was that um, I must. Have, this must be like I don't know six eight years ago. I was on YouTube, you know, watching stand-up comedians quite a lot, um, and I went through a little phase of watching roasts. And right. So a roast is where somebody is invited, uh, usually a comedian, but it doesn't have to be a comedian. Um, and then there is a panel of people who stand at a podium and say rude things about them. And is it always it's people like who know hat. them? It should be, because <laughs> it should be. You, I don't think it is always, but um, it's it's the equip. It's the kind of it's the. Um, what at Lecoq they would call the contra mask. The, it's the other, it's the kind of opposite of uh, a dinner to honor somebody. Uh -huh. So it's the same format. You sit, you know, you, you're at a top table as it were, and you have a toast master who is called a roast master in this, in the, roasts con in the roast context. And instead of saying nice things about them, you say rude, you say nasty things about them. But with love. With love. So it is, it is an honor. Yes, yes, it's a kind of, it's a kind of backhanded honor. It's a kind of, I mean, at its worst, it's a kind of um, men's club back slapping ho, ho, ho type uh, thing where you're like, oh, we're all in on the joke. Right. Um, but it's in, it is interesting to watch lots of them back to back because a lot of them are just awful um, and they're very lazy. So if you have somebody like, so if Jonah Hill is there, people will talk about how fat he is. That's yeah. just, that's just bound, it's, you know, it's the only thing people can think of to say about. He's Jonah. not actually fat. No, he's just, he's, he's not skinny. Also, there's um, nothing wrong with being fat, just to no. clarify. 
So, uh, and if there's and if there's a woman on the panel, they, you know, you will talk about um, her having sex with lots of people, or how ugly she is, or you know, there are just these tropes that come up again and again and again. Oh. Um, and the Richard Pryor roast, although it has some of that in it, was refreshing when I first watched it because it just felt it felt more brutal. And at the same time, I really felt like they knew each other. What I didn't know was that they just they made uh, three and a half episodes of the Richard Pryor show together. So they did know each other a fair bit at that point. And a lot of it is, I think, scripted. Um, and I think they are making fun of the format to some extent. But of course it's scripted. It's always scripted. Yeah, not necessarily. I mean, it's some of it, I, th I think can, you can do, a, you can have a mixture of scripted and then off the cuff. Right. Uh, yeah, of course, you'll have thought about what you were going to say beforehand. But what I mean is, I think the people at the Richard Pryor Roast are not necessarily um, performing stuff that they've written themselves. I see. It may have been written for the show. Yeah. Um, but I think that's not the case for all of it. And it's uh, what I realized today was that, um, so it's it's part of the of episode four of the Richard Pryor show, which uh -huh. went out in 1977 on NBC and was canceled uh -huh. after four episodes um, because it got very poor ratings. Uh -huh. And they edited the, the roast altogether is 40, nearly 45 minutes. And they just use about 10 minutes of it. Um, and they they definitely clean it up. Okay, so I've some... seen the full 44 minutes. Yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, the full 44 minutes is more brutal and more offensive than what they show. Of course. Um, yeah. Of course. But so even... what, was, what was the most interesting thing about it? Or what was the thing that sort of stood out? Uh, Richard Pryor, for me. Um, he gets up and he's just so, I, I think he has such a great presence. And he seems so comfortable um, and he's very inventive and he doesn't read from any notes. Everybody else is reading from notes and he doesn't. He just gets up and uh, he's I mean, he's yeah, he, he doesn't. I'm trying to remember now. I think for some people, he does say some quite brutally honest things and other people, he just invents stuff. But it's I, I found it very funny um, and very it had a kind of I, I mean, yeah, I kind of want to swear at this point because I think the energy, and it makes sense to me now, the en I mean, they know the show is cancelled and it just feels like they're going, I, we don't care anymore. Right. Um, we're just going to have a really nice time. And I felt that energy when I first watched it. Okay. Whereas the other roasts I'd seen, there's this kind of carefulness. You know, they're trying to, they're trying to be good so that maybe they get invited to another roast. There um, were... Um... And was he famous as you know for being Richard Pryor? But he must have been to have his yeah. own show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they right. give him like the episodes are again forty. They must have been hour long episodes if you mm -hmm. include adverts. Um, it's a long. Which is incredible for that. Yeah. Sorry, say again. It's incredible for that period of time in seventy seven. Yeah. Or like late seventies for an African American to be given yeah. an hour long show. No, absolutely. Um, and it's a fascinating show. I mean, it, the, the, it's a, it, there are a lot of black people in the cast. Um, it's, uh, it's quite, like, it's quite on the nose about racism, uh, but it's also quite queer uh, in really interesting ways. Um, oh. Yeah. He, I didn't know uh, that. So, okay, so I dug a little bit because one of the things that's taken out of the roast is a reference to the Hollywood Bowl. Um, and I can't remember who it is who says uh, something about the Hollywood Bowl. Um, and so I didn't know, Richard Pryor went to a, a gay rights rally at the Hollywood Bowl in 1977. Uh, and he was really irritated by the way it was kind of organized and the way it was unfolding he he felt like they were being like the, the word gay wasn't mentioned for example um and uh, so he felt there was a kind of dishonesty to it but also the both the crew and the crowd were treated the black performers really badly um, oh. and so when he came on stage he just he was just angry and he just kind of um he let rip but he talked on stage about having sex with this guy back when he was a teenager. Um, and it's not clear whether he whether that's a true story or not, but he was definitely, he was kind of open to painting himself as bisexual. 
and he that kind of comes into the show there's a there are kind of little hints and nods towards queer sexuality on the show um which are really nice there's a whole segment in i think the third episode um which is this lesbian monologue and it's not funny it's just well, not really i mean it is uh, there are kind of there, there's it's funny in the editing of it but it's quite a serious piece and it's in the middle of this comedy show it's it's really lovely oh my gosh i'm because i've seen his stand-up shows i haven't seen the richard fire show mm. um robin williams is in the panel yes yeah he's one of the he because he's in the he's one of the actors on the show I think right. Richard Pryor really rated him as a comedian. Yeah, which is surprising to me. I think they did stuff together. And like Robin mm -hmm. Williams' style is so, um, it feels so fake in a way. Right. Like he yeah, does yeah, with silly you. voices and things like mm -hmm. that. And Richard Pryor seems like this vulnerable puppy mm. telling all these truths about the world. And it's such yeah. a weird mix, but... um. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I agree yeah. with you. Yeah, and they, they uh, I also watched a show that they did together. Um, it's called Live in LA or something. And Richard Pryor uh -huh. does like 10 minutes and Robin Williams does 10 minutes. I, I have the feeling that Richard Pryor really liked um, Robin Williams' improvisation. I think he's into improv. There's an improv section in the show, um, in, in the Richard Pryor show, uh, which I think is okay. really, really improv. He says, okay, with the cast, we're gonna do a bit of improv now. And I think it is, like it's 10 minutes of improv, oh. which again is like, what is this <laughs> crazy stuff? It's so good. It's like these, you know, these super um, like scripted sketches. Some of them last 15 minutes. Some of them are not funny at all. Um, <laughs> and there's some physical humor, some clowning, and then this improv section and then stand up. Uh, in the fourth episode, he has a Native American stand-up come on, which again in 1977 <gasps> is incredible. And he does wow. a bit about, um, you know, white settlers coming to America. Uh, it's it's really fascinating what he does in that show. But I agree with you, Robin Williams mm -hmm. is, he has such a different, like he is so far away from authentic when I watch him. I think he becomes, he grows into himself as an actor during the 80s and 90s, but as a comic in like at that point, yeah, he's a million, for me watching him, he's a million miles away from the authenticity that Richard Pryor gives off. Uh -huh. Yeah, super uh -huh. interesting though. Yeah, but they, I think they, they really, I, I think he really rated Robin Williams. That's the feeling I get. Yeah. And was there anything else about the roast that struck you? No, um, no, no, I mean, I'm trying to like I just I just liked I, I think I liked watching him and his energy and yeah the kind of the what the what do you think brutality it, of it what do you think Loving it does him. to the, <laughs> what yeah. do you think it does to the roasty to be sort of attacked publicly like that because mm. it you know like would you like to be roasted by your friends even though we love you like if we said cruel things. I think if it's done uh, accurately, I think it can make you feel seen. It's that feeling of, okay, they know all of the bad things about me and they love me anyway, it's, it's that. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, what they say about Richard Pryor is, um, he takes drugs, he likes to have sex with young white women and he's black. Those are the three things that he's roasted for. Um, and he looks like he's having a great time. Like he really, you know, he, he that maybe it's part of his talent, but he looks like he's having a time of his life, um, having these things that said about him, which is, I can kind of, I can kind of see that like part of it is just to be talked about is exciting, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yes. And then to have people say things that are, even if they're mean, they're kind of like, oh yeah, you, you know this about me and you still wanna sit next to me at this table. Is, is nice. Or perhaps the fact that you can say this and we all enjoy it means that it's actually, you know, I know that you're not serious about this. You know what I mean? Yes. I, the, the opposite is, um, uh, I think a, a guy at college once was like always teasing me and I was like, 
I don't like it. And he's like, that mm. means we're friends. I'm like, I don't like it. So no. I don't think we're friends. <laughs> no, no, you have to consent to be the roastee. I think that's really yeah. important. You have to yes. say, I want to be here. And I, and I think the people who are invited to come and roast you or tease you in this case, that's important too. Like you don't necessarily want to be teased by anybody and everybody. There are, there are bound to be some people who you feel comfortable being teased by because you know there is love there or you know that you can have a serious conversation about it if necessary and other people who you don't feel yeah. comfortable being teased by. I think the same would be true of a roast. Uh, Meg, John and Justin have a really good episode. They, so they do the Meg, John and Justin podcast. They have a really good episode about teasing, which goes into quite a lot of this. I would recommend that. I need to watch, I need to listen to that because mm -hmm. um, I'm noticing in myself that when I'm in company, I will sort of take the piss out of, you know, someone dear to me and I'm like, oh, and like fall into like tropes of like, I don't know, the goofy one or the, you know, mm. I just take on these roles and then things come out of my mouth and I'm like, I don't know if I've had consent. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. No, I totally, I mean, I, I definitely have the tendency to be cruel and I have all kinds of friends who've told me that I've said something to them at some point in the past that they had never forgotten because it was so pointed. Um, and I feel terrible. I mean, sometimes those things were very funny. <laughs> so I also feel kind of like, oh, I'm a funny guy, but that was really cruel and I'm sorry that you still remember it. But that like- But I now like I'm like, you haven't said anything like that. <laughs> Do you feel bad? Do you feel I feel bad. You, I, don't, I don't feel you've been mean to me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have, like, we play the game of you undermining me on stage and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I don't, but maybe, no, I, I mean, I'm not asking you to be mean to me. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't, like, I you don't would cut me down. To people, um, but, yeah, it's something that I have done and don't feel particularly proud of now. No, no. But you, because, um, of the, because of this question of like, is it consensual? And um, I don't always enjoy, I very often don't enjoy being teased. Depends what kind of mood I'm in. Sometimes I'm just, I can't deal with it. My skin is too thin. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. It feels like, uh, and if it's someone who, who you love or is close to you, like, don't, don't, expose me in mm. front of other people yeah yeah i am my skin of all people you should know right now that i am not in right. the mood you should read the signals yes exactly. <laughs> but um have you ever been roasted in any situation no i don't think so no i remember when I, so when i studied I, with when i studied with philippe gollier um there was a thing that would happen say I don't know, at the end of some of the workshops, um, you, you, you know, he would invite the class to take on somebody else's character or imitate somebody else. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, very, people would very rarely imitate me, but when they did it, they didn't, like, it wasn't very good. Um, and I remember being really annoyed. And I was like, it wasn't, like, it wasn't particularly funny. It wasn't pointed, like, it was just not close enough. And I always wondered, what was it about me that people couldn't, imitate me or didn't want to but maybe I don't know maybe I wouldn't have enjoyed it if they had really gone for it I think it's quite hard to imitate you because of your the level of articulation you have for uh, for me see, for example yeah. I would struggle mm. to I would Did have to like, like mm -hmm. sorry for myself to perform you I would have to go bubble bubble I don't know I, I wouldn't be able to come up with the words I would have to just make stuff up and I would have to have confidence in myself to be able to do that yeah 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 I think that is I think that's probably what people got stuck on was um the articulation or the amount of words that come out of my mouth but that's not the... <laughs> yes, word, word, word. <laughs> yeah but you, you I don't know that's not the thing then to like to go for do you know what I mean that wouldn't be the thing mm. to try and like that. I don't know. That's just words. 
um yes yes it, yeah so choose a different thing yeah yeah exactly like I think I was more I think there was a guy at school who I remember just imitated my walk once and that was that was a uh, a bigger roast of me or a more accurate roast of me than anything that anyone did at Gollier he just he just walked a few steps yeah. and was exactly right I was like oh my god yes I do walk like that um and it it was so, <laughs> it was so full of my of my character it was really inter it was really shocking because I had no idea that people had noticed me to that extent that somebody would be able to imitate my walk oh I want to yeah. watch you walk Adrian <laughs> <laughs> it's been so long since we've walked in the same space has anyone ever roasted you Um, I guess similarly, like in sort of performance workshop situations when someone's supposed to imitate me and then, you know, exaggerate mm. aspects of me. But I wanted to just very quickly say before we uh, wrap up this section that when I was in secondary school, I just remembered this this evening when we were talking about roasts. Um, I was a prefect and it was very controversial that I was prefect because I wasn't a shoe in at all. I was kind of a high achiever, but I was didn't have the right attitude. But anyway, mm -hmm. somehow I got to be in the prefectorial board. And I think every month or every week we would have a roast. But this was like there was no comedy involved. It was just mm -hmm. about taking people. If like you didn't like something that someone had done, you'd say write it, you bring it up at the roast. That and you have to stand up and like safe really it was it was horrible and I just all you know I was crying mm -hmm. the whole time every time um they were like you need to change your attitude you need to do this better da, 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 da. and <laughs> oh no that's and so it's supposed sad. to be like character building <laughs> no yeah I can imagine I can totally imagine the thinking but oh how how awful how destructive well, it wasn't destructive per se. I mean, there were obviously people who were like, you know, this is for the good of the school, of the community. We we are prefects and we take our responsibility really seriously to like look after the, the younger people and we need mm. to look after each other and make sure we, you know, so there was some care, but this okay. was several decades ago when there isn't this thing about mental health or shame mm. or... And yeah. so, <laughs> And the language it was, I suppose, more more straightforward and brusque, but maybe that was also better because, you know, the way we sort of uh, appreciate, say, when a, a German person, I'm generalizing here, sort of like speaks English and they're sort of more direct. And I'm like, okay, I understand. It kind right. of hurts, but okay, I, I hear you. Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah. But it was, yes, horrible. <laughs> Sounds like it. I mean, I, yeah, I can't imagine that would have been just, oh God, it's, if it, my school, it would have been just awful. Um, but that brings me back to what you were kind of asking about the, the roast and the roasting, whether they enjoy it, I think. I suppose mm -hmm. another part of it is that they, they know they wouldn't be there unless there was a lot of love for them and what they do. So that's the kind of platform on which everything else is built. Right. Which if that's not there, then it's just people being nasty to you for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it's eight o'clock, so we should be answering people's questions, but there aren't any questions this week. Not yet, but I'm excited that Caroline is on her first bus. On the bus. Yes, I'm watching us on the bus. bus. Wow. I know, but does that mean that Gloria is not watching? Maybe Gloria's watching, but doesn't, isn't signing in. Yes, because it's Caroline who usually oh, no, um, relays the Gloria's questions. Oh, are you? Are we losing you? Really? Yes. Am I gonna have um, to do you have? Up? Okay, let's <laughs> ask. Let's... <laughs> yeah. What, oh. what? What have you gone? Can you hear me? Yeah, the signal's pretty bad today. Okay. Um. Shall I <laughs> just talk more about what I watched King. Um, this afternoon? Oh yeah, you're really um, you're really freezing. Um, okay, so Caroline has updated us. She's been to the hairdresser, had a singing lesson, and then MS. Wow, you're living just a normal life, Caroline. Oh my word. Oh, George is here. Hello, George. Oh, that's so nice, George Fuller. Um, 
Okay, I will answer the question. Vera, I don't know whether you're here or not. I can see your face. I, 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 I'm talking, but I don't know whether I'm oh. being received. I haven't heard anything you've said for the last, I don't know, two minutes probably. So sorry. <laughs> That's I've been fine. Just, I've been filling in. I've been like, you know, on, like uh, on daytime TV when something goes wrong and the hosts have to jump in and like fill that. I've been doing that. And now you've. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, who would you like to roast, Vera? I don't feel clever enough to roast anyone. Oh, okay. And this might be a confidence thing. Yeah. But like, you know how comedians, like comedy is really hard and comedians are normally like super smart and really observant. And I'm very mm. self-obsessed. -obs <laughs> and, <laughs> and I, well, I, that's an accusation towards me. And also I don't, I don't know if I'm that, yeah. I don't know whether I'd be good at roasting anyone. Okay. I, I'm afraid of being hurtful. That's the thing mm. I live with in life anyway, because I sometimes, you know, my brain goes, you are making the world a worse place. And so I'll be okay. like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to sort of, you, there's a line that you have to tread and you probably don't know until you say the words out loud. Like the, the best, funniest things that you <laughs> can say in a roast are the riskiest things that you can say, right? And they'll either go really well or everyone yeah. will go, why did you why did you say that? That was that was not necessary. And then you'd feel just awful, wouldn't you? Um, is, is there anyone you would like to roast you? You. I would like you to <laughs> roast me. I would like to roast you. I think that would be, yeah. We could get some people together. Um, we could do a gentle roast. We could do like a slow roast. <laughs> Would you like to roast anyone? Um, no, like I, I think if, if I'd been asked that 10 years ago, I would have been like, yeah, I'd like to roast anyone and everyone. Um, but my brain has slowed down so much um, that I can't imagine that I would be able to roast anyone right now. Also, I am more worried now about that line between saying something funny and saying something that would be really upsetting. Uh, I mean, I. The, you know, Miss Samantha Man is somebody at, um, at the Anti-Slam, which Paula Varjak and Dan Simpson um, organize, or are the, it's their brainchild, and they've been doing that for, for years. Um, I, I was kind of roasting poets as, you know, as a judge on the Anti-Slam, and it was lots of fun. And partly because people were, the poets were playing characters. So there was very mm -hmm. little, you know, no one had any skin in the game. Um, that felt really nice. <laughs> Skin in the game, dogs in the race. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dogs in the race might have been a better. Um... I like so much skin in the game. But I suppose I've also been a judge on the anti slam, but I took a different tactic. I didn't really roast again because I don't feel like I have the verbal dexterity. I would just like pull faces or like just wriggle or like make fun of myself. But mm -hmm. yeah. Um, well, one of like that's, I, I think. It's kind of interesting about watching different roasts is you have to play to your strengths as a person on the panel like not everybody is Richard Pryor right and mm -hmm. it's kind of I find it interesting to see Robin Williams in that roast he doesn't say anything particularly he just does Robin Williams yes. <laughs> he doesn't actually say anything he doesn't say anything and you either like it or you don't like it but he's just doing what he's good at yeah uh, and that I think that's that's a that's a good tactic Yes, yes. And we can Richard Pryor, frankly, you just look at him and he's funny. He is funny. He's got a funny face. He's and so great. Yeah. Like watch, uh, I'm gonna obviously find links, but um he's a really he's really good. Like there's a sketch he does, I think in episode four of his show, or it might be episode three, I don't remember now. Um it's just a kind of it's a very classic clown sketch where somebody's car is broken down and he turns up as the mechanic and makes it worse. And he's just <laughs> He's so good. And you I, you don't expect that because he comes across as being a words person. Uh -huh. He's very in his body and his face is amazing and his timing is so good. Um, he's a really good physical comedian. And he's just, yeah, he's so great at the rose, just sitting there. He's such a pleasure to watch as he reacts to people. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. 
Caroline asks, does cruelty feel like a base level for laughs? That's a really interesting question. I don't think it has to be. I don't think, I don't think so. Because there's, be. there's observational comedy, which is like, isn't it funny how blah, 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 blah. So it's like mm -hmm. about, and then- yeah. but, Recognition or identification can be yeah. a base level for laughs. Mm. And then there's the thing about making fun of, and then yeah. we kind of go, if you're punching up, it's fine. But if you're punching down, it's not fine. But yeah. I have been thinking, what about like sideways punching? Or what if it's not clear? You know, we because yes. like, I talk about race and gender so much, like, and that not being an oppression Olympics. Mm. But if there's no hierarchy, how do you know whether you're punching down or up? Totally. Right? Yeah. Well, that, I mean, um, that's a question that comes up for me when I watch more of Richard Pryor's stuff. And when I was watching um, Dave LaChapelle, Dave Chappelle, sorry, not Dave LaChapelle, Dave Chappelle, is that right? Yeah, no, Dave, oh, I don't remember now. Isn't that ridiculous? My brain. Anyway, um, they both do a certain amount of anti-Chinese material and Dave Chappelle, does quite a lot of anti-trans stuff, which he then talks about and he's then like, no, I can do this. I can totally do this because I do it with respect and it doesn't feel respectful to me and it feels like punching down. And I find that really, uh -huh. I find that difficult. I don't, I don't enjoy that at all. Um, and I don't think it's okay. That feels cruel, but yeah. So I feel like there's this kind of question of where do you situate yourself? So I see a lot of comedians do that. They come on stage and they situate themselves low so that then the field is open for them to punch at will. And I don't always agree with their situation of themselves, if that makes sense. Right, yes, by, yes, because that's, that is a strategy to go like, I am the biggest fool here, so I yeah. can just make fun of everyone else. Yeah, 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 exactly. Hmm. And I, I mean, straight guys do that a lot just by coming on and saying I'm ugly. And then it's like, now I can do what I like. <laughs> I'm ugly and nobody fancies me. Therefore, I am the lowest one on the pile and I'm sitting at the back of the room going, no, you don't. I don't agree with your assessment of the situation. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that, yeah, but it's a really interesting question because I think cruelty, it adds, I mean, it, there, is a, there is a comedy of cruelty which can be very funny, um, but it's a, yeah, I don't know, like there's a, there's a whole great question of ethics around that, I think, is it okay? And how do I, you know, how do I feel about laughing uh, at something which is based in cruelty? I don't know. I probably feel more and more uncomfortable about it. Also, and this is to do, I was talking about it the other day, you know how Oscar's so white, people were having a, mm. a go at Kevin, no, what, oh, Chris, oh, who, who hosted that Chris year? Rock? Was it Chris Rock? I it think might, it was. I think it might have been, I don't remember now. Anyway, they were Which criticizing is. that year's um, Academy Awards for being racist towards Asians. Or Kevin and Hart? I don't know. I can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember I what year it was, it was and what Chris you, you know, Carry on. Yes. This Kevin is already Hart. us going like, which Asian American was it? <laughs> <laughs> so bad. Um, but I. I could see that elements of the show were not very nice towards Asian Americans, but then Sasha Baron Cohen turned up as Ali G and he did a response um, to Oscars So White. And I thought that, that that was clever and political, but people were like, oh no, he had like jokes about yellow things like the minions. And I'm like, mm. but because he's, Ali G and like because of the concept because it it was to me so clearly um bringing up racial stuff in order to mm -hmm. undermine the status quo I was like okay that bit's not racist but that bit is right. but then my question is if it's still hurtful do you not do it at all and I, I'm sure there's a way through that that's smarter mm. that I yeah. haven't quite worked out yet yeah there's I mean there's a really tricky place where comedy wants to talk about things that are very serious like racism for example um where so i've just watched an episode of brooklyn 99 um yes. where they wanted to talk about um sergeant jeffords uh what's his first name 
Terry, um, yes. being racially profiled by a white cop on the street. Uh -huh. And it's fascinating that like, you can see there's a conversation between the captain who's black and Terry, who's the sergeant, who's also black. They have a conversation about it. And they both, that the actors both look incredibly moved having this, doing this dialogue because it's a really serious topic. Mm -hmm. And that was made a few years ago. It's not a current thing, but still, you know, it's been in the air for a long time. Yeah. Um, and then they, and then, but it's a comedy show. So they have to put in comedy as well. And I, I think they do it well, but it also, it feels really tricky to kind of navigate through this part where they want, they really want to acknowledge that this is a very, very serious issue at the same time as not forgetting that they're making a comedy show about cops. Yeah, and also just because you, you brought up the idea of actors who happen mm -hmm. to be using their actual skin and their actual identity right. and lived experience, right? Yeah, exactly. And that's like kind of, you know, in the in consumer culture, it's like kind of consumed. It's mm. it's how how do we look after performers who are put in that situation? That's right, exactly um, that. Yeah, yeah. Especially in theatre, if you're doing like every night over and over and over again. Well, and yes, but, and in theatre, you've got that question of you may have said yes, like at one point, and then you've got to do it for the next six months or however long. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Um, we have overrun, guys. <laughs> um, thank you so much for watching, for being with us today. I don't, no, I don't have a joke. Do you have a joke? No, I never remember jokes. Okay, um, okay. Um, this is another Tim Wells special, Tim Wells Gentleman Poet. What do you get if you cross a chicken with a cement mixer? I don't know. What do you get if you cross a chicken with a cement mixer? A brick layer. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, Tim. Good joke. Becca, um, I would highly recommend Tim's uh, poetry uh, live, but also um, written. But um, he's also written some pulp horror to do <gasps> with werewolves and like um, skinheads. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and it's great. That's amazing. So look out for Tim Wiles. And if you like this episode, if you like us, if you like the Omnibus Theatre, please click on the link below or share it and yeah. donate whatever you can and spread the word. And next week we will be talking about music. Music. Awesome. Thanks. Bye. Bye.